Hey everyone, Angelo here in Burbank, California. It's uh, really beautiful out here. There's palm trees behind me, mountains over there. Yeah. Uh, everything is like super sized and massive here, which I like. Uh, I don't like places where everything's tiny and cramped and you can't get around. There are those places here too. And uh, it's been a lot being here, but being homeless in Virginia helped get me ready for that. In that, first two or three months when I was homeless, I had a lot of times where I thought I seriously want to live in a home again. I was desperate. And so when I get those feelings a little bit here, like, oh, why didn't I stay in Virginia? It'd be so much easier. Everything is so much more expensive around here. It's not really true, but the gas especially is really expensive. Most places around four to five dollars a gallon. And uh, there's not as many, there's like, well, there are suburbs. I just don't know where they are. I don't know where everything is yet. Every day I'm finding a new uh, neighborhood. I've been in North Hollywood, West Hollywood, Burbank. That's it. I've only been here three days and uh, been um, sort of overwhelmed, but not in a bad way. I truly love it out here. It's amazing. It's beautiful. I love how big everything is. There's an epic quality to it. All the street names that I've heard in movies, that I've seen shot in movies, and I've only been around a bit of it. Look back there, you can see mountains behind me. There you go, there's a the thumbnail. It's just amazing, and people have been supportive and helping me, and a lot of you out there have been very encouraging and supportive. Thank you for that. I really could not do this alone, and so I'm determined, as overwhelmed as I am, I kind of wanted to be at a group tonight for filmmakers, just somewhere, some meetup or something, event, meet and greet. I didn't quite make it out to that. I was editing videos, and I was late for something, so here's another thing. So, money is an issue right now, but I'm not panicking over it, even though it's so expensive. For one thing, there's a great store around here, a chain of stores called 99, like 99 cents or something. Everything's 99 cents, or so they have some stuff like 150 or 250. They have, those, these stores are huge, and they have so much, they have produce, they have vegetables, they have nice loaves of bread, not just that cheap Dollar Tree bread. They have lots of good tuna, the bag tuna, which I like. So, I got a bunch of stuff there for like $27, that'll last me quite a while. I'm gonna call my bank. Uh, this is a tip for people out there who are struggling financially, especially with your credit card. If you can't afford your credit card payments, um, your interest chart payments are too high, your minimum payments, call the bank, tell them you're in a situation of financial hardship, because they, first of all, like half the country's in that situation, they're not trying to alienate all those people, um, they're trying to make sure people pay something rather than avoid the bank and not pay anything. So I already tried once. It was weird because they said, you don't have a payment due, your payments have all been on time, so you have to wait until your next payment is, or comes in, whatever your next payment is, and then call us back. I'm like, huh? They also said, uh, we don't, like, we help people who work some job, but you have to get some job. You, If you don't work, like, try getting a part-time job. I said, I'm not trying to do that. They're like, well, okay, you have to talk to somebody else, a supervisor or whatever. And then the call got dropped and I had to call back. And then they said, well, call back when you have a payment due. Not like right when it's due, meaning when you receive, you know, your next uh, payment summary saying you owe this much by this date. Uh, which should be in a few days, so I'm going to call them and explain I'm in financial hardship and of course it's going to be back and forth. They want to test how much they can get out of you and I'm going to be firm. It's going to drop my credit score, I don't care. My credit score is not helping me. I've had a good credit score most of my life, it is not helping me. And that's the thing used to, you know, as an albatross for people to, uh, you know, um, basically it works in favor of the rich. So, and I'm happy that there's some politicians who are speaking out about that and saying credit scores should not, you know, be such a significant factor for people when uh, credit and um, uh, finances used to screw over so many lower income people. So I'm going to call the bank, work that out. 
I went to a social services office today, two of them. One, they couldn't help me. They said we don't do food stamps here in, in general relief. So I went to another one, applied for food stamps. I felt so sort of like didn't feel good about it. Not that I felt bad about asking for help, but like the indignity of I have to provide all this information and tell you exactly what I'm making, which I would like I would be I was up totally upfront about. I was searching everything, but I'm like I just don't like this. I don't like doing this. It's not an emergency for me. It's going to be tough, but I can get work. If I have to, I'll just get a job somewhere. But I'm going to be working somehow. And I um went to get the actual the you know food stamp card it's like a debit card and they said huh there's no balance on it like for whatever reason the supervisor is not in i don't know what how what any of this has to do with anything but they're like well you have to make an appointment with your case manager and then tr uh, try it again i'm like this is already not even worth it Driving around anywhere is bad enough. Driving around in LA for a case manager when I got stuff to do. I got shoots to do, I got writing to do, and it felt not even worth it. So I tried calling back to just say, cancel my application, couldn't get anyone on the phone. Time was ticking, it was like five in the afternoon. I had to get to a cafe to edit video and try and write. I didn't write today, I wrote last night, but Problem with getting to cafes, you know, a lot of them close early, a lot of them are packed, a lot of McDonald's and, you know, fast food places around here don't have outlets, and so it's always a challenge finding somewhere, but I'm learning the places, so that's good. So it's not terribly difficult, and that's, see, that's the key, what I was saying about getting overwhelmed, I'm having to decide, you know, and be resilient with the, um, you know, times I've had uh, being homeless, learning that you don't panic in the moment, just wait and decide. You know, not just wait and decide, but you keep moving forward, but you know you're going to have to wait for things. What a shot behind me. Man, these videos are going to be something with all this scenery behind me. I love it at night. I'd like to shoot at day. And now, by the way, so much, and of course, this is how it is my mom. She has to see it before she's okay with something. Now that I'm in LA, she's really glad I'm here. She thinks it's a great idea. She wants to film with Moist Andy. That's good, we're talking every day. Um, it's funny the time difference, just getting over that. Look at the palm trees behind me. I'll make sure I'm not in oh, the light behind me. Um, the beautiful little camera, look at these palm trees. So it's larger than life scenery everywhere. Tons of people in entertainment. You see people's headshots posted on telephone poles. People are, and, and you know, people they need to get their themselves out there. Need to work, and so that's great. I'm learning network, and the great thing about networking is, like, I'm good. I want to share and I want to listen. Um, I'm not necessarily trying to get a job from anybody. I'm, I might be very glad to. It's just the same dilemma I had before. How much time do I have to work on something else as opposed to my own videos, which are worth very much to me right now. And the more difficult it gets, the more I even want to do it. But working a job, especially in filmmaking, can be great because you meet people and you make relationships. And I've, I've already met some people, made some new friends. And that was really cool. It's really reassuring to see, oh, okay, good. There are good people around here who, you know, you can just get to know and they're allies. So I'm not alone out here. That's really important. Now, I've still got a lot of work to do. I got to figure out so much what I'm going to do, but it's great. Whenever I get down, I got down today, I was really frustrated with the, the whole social services thing. I was like, man, screw these food stamps. I don't want to deal with any of this. Uh, here's maybe a good thumbnail shot. Everything's a potential thumbnail shot. Look at the, the palm trees behind me. Got a lot of work coming. Hey, did you like those Nathan Barnott videos? I was teasing whether we were going to work together. So really glad to be making videos with him. He is amazing. I think if Harold Lloyd was around today, he would be doing what Nathan Barnott's doing. Harold Lloyd's one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. Uh, Nathan is amazingly talented and incredibly generous and very nice. Uh, 
And if he wasn't those things, I wouldn't work with him. It wouldn't matter how talented he was. He is a really, really uh, genuine guy. And, um, you know, he communicates with his fans and everything. And that's what I am. I'm a fan of his. And I've reached out to him. And, you know, uh, it's been great. Um, I really admire him. There's other people I'd like to work with, too. Still working it out, talking. It's just amazing. Like, so much here. Um, so much going on and a big thing for me is just keep it simple don't get overwhelmed by choices I was getting discouraged looking at jobs listing job listings on Craigslist and thinking there's so much stuff I don't even know how to sort through any of this thinking you know maybe I should get a bouncer job at least one or two days a week not even sure how to go about it but that's okay I don't need to do it all at once that's fine um, there was another thing frustrated me. I was like, man, what's the even point of doing this? Which is to apply for medical help um, through the count or through the county or whatever the city. I needed my birth certificate and social security card, and I was like, well, those are in Virginia. And they said, well, you can get pictures of them and send them away. I'm like, there's no way I can do that. My parents can't, could never in a million years operate a smartphone and do that. I'm not even worried about it. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Another thing, living situation. There are rooms around here. So for, of course, in, you know, in my head I'm thinking, oh no, everything's super expensive. Well, there are surrounding areas. So if I can, there are rooms for like six, seven hundred dollars a month. That's not the horrible thing. The horrible thing is the gas and getting around everywhere and getting places and I'm learning all that. But there are a lot of like-minded people around here, which there weren't so much in Virginia and DC and Maryland, meaning people who understand what I'm doing in filmmaking. So it's, it would be good to live with people who understand I do this and I don't have to keep it secret from, just because I feel weird, like if someone's not interested in it, it's not a horrible thing, it's just, if they're not really into it, I feel weird like bringing it up to them. Like, they're like, oh yeah, you do this thing. So there's lots of like-minded people around here doing the same thing. Hustling, trying to get work, meeting people, whatever. So I am uh, interested in trying to get a roommate or several roommates, because I gotta get a place here. It is, is harder to be homeless here than in Virginia. Virginia was much easier because in Virginia, I knew the places where I could just, like it was no problem. Small streets, small everything. Here, everything's huge, so getting around anywhere you need to be to work, to um, to eat, it's more expensive, it's more of a challenge, and you have more li you have less time to do it. Your time is more limited. Check out this lighting. Wow, I've got so many choices for this thumbnail image. Hey. So. It is overwhelming, it's a lot, but I, I don't feel overwhelmed. The thing that's overwhelming is like so many great things about this place and just keeping it simple. Realizing, yes, I wanna do a ton of stuff. Yes, I make mistakes every day and errors in my judgment, but um, that's fine. That's really okay. The worst thing is to fixate on them and be miserable about it when there's no, first of all, there's no benefit and there's no reason for doing that. There's no excuse. Because I've always got something I can be doing. That's the great thing about you all out there watching. Great thing about you too. So I'm really focused now. I'm really determined to make the most of this. I've got other people I plan on meeting. I met somebody I knew from Virginia. Um, so a lot of great things about here. The traffic is uh, like a gladiator sport. Um, it is... Uh, some places, like around here, it seems like people dr drive very, pr not very, but pretty safely. Other places, they're always gunning it to get, to overtake someone or whatever, and I just let them. I'm not even worried about it. Um, there's no competition for me as far as that goes, because it's the last thing on my mind. I'm not stressing out about that. The car, it's probably burning up coolant from a gasket, head gasket. That's what I believe now. That's what the guy at AutoZone or whatever said. I know white, um, uh, what is it? I know white exhaust is coming out of the car. That could mean coolant's burning up in it because it's not leaking out of the car. So, uh, while 
try and do. I can't really afford it right now, or I don't want to. $30 bottle of like a gasket sealant or head gasket sealant pour into the radiator. You let the car idle for an hour. I'll do that when I can't for now. I'll just fill it with coolant once. It's not overheating. And I realized it was overheating. Like it started burning up a lot of coolant like every 300 miles or so. That's what it seemed like. Um, when I got it uh, filled up at Andy's Auto Clinic and when I first left for LA. So that's good. I'm not driving 300 miles constantly here. When I was on my road trip, I was driving 300 miles in like uh, five or six hours. So that was a big problem. And then I think maybe I was filling up too much coolant in there. And that's why the pressure was so high that it was boiling out onto the air duct and onto the battery. It's really frustrating again, but I knew from my lessons from being homeless, just ultimately do not let it enrage me too bad and make me too miserable. Um, parking's an issue a lot of places, but again, like you time it right, you can get the places you need, you can figure out what you need. People are helpful, people are nice. Um, people have been very welcoming of me. When I said, yeah, I literally got here two days ago, I'm sleeping in my car, I drove from Virginia to be here. Uh, especially the actors group I went to. So, you know, we're all in this together in a way. So it's it just makes sense to be nice and be helpful. I'm talking to my mom, she's doing well. I'll get her, you know, voice on video. Uh, there's no way she can figure out how to do a FaceTime or whatever, uh, Skype on video. A lot of people live in their cars out here. I'm learning places to sleep in my car. LA could do so much better about the homeless situation. I would like to do some, you know, engagement, some activism about that. And of course, this is all great research for my screenplay about homeless people who are, like, I want to make them humanized in the film. I want them to be funny, to be sad, uh, you know, to have friendships that go in different directions, they get closer and they get driven apart. So this is all great research for that. But I do want to shoot it. I think it makes me appreciate how much more different Virginia is and DC and Maryland because there's nothing like this out there. Even the biggest cities like Baltimore, maybe, 50 miles north or so of um, Arlington, nothing, not even close to as big as this. Baltimore's kind of a, you know, it's a city, it's a big city, but LA just dwarfs it. So I realize how different, like the architecture and everything about it, uh, like now Virginia is compared to here, Northern Virginia really, compared to LA, and I realize I, even more clearly, I want my film to be set there. There's so many films set here in LA. People know what LA looks like. I want to show a film that feels like Northern Virginia and Annandale, Arlington, Fairfax, Falls Church, Springfield, all that stuff. So a lot going on. Um, thank you for your support. I'm going to be working very hard and just keep moving forward because everybody has every reason to start, you know, getting discouraged and, uh, now that's the absolute last, you know, option that would be good. I gotta go to the DMV, I gotta get my, you know, whatever, my California driver's license. I'll be excited for that. So anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I'm Angelo, I've been homeless for six months now. Made it to LA somehow, Foom. the number of times my car overheated. It has not overheated since I filled up the coolant like a day or two ago and um yeah two days ago and so just keeping an eye on it and uh i expect it'll be a little while before it needs more coolant and hopefully i'm making some money so hey help me out share the videos like them engage you can you know if you don't like them you can say so um but really what are you doing here uh then um so uh you know stay tuned a lot more coming Please, you know, engage with the videos. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see and any other ideas. I've gotten people still reaching out to me, emailing me, giving me helpful tips and advice and people to look up. So that's really amazing. People keep coming around me. So, again, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm in Los Angeles and uh, a lot more videos are coming, so subscribe too, that's the other thing. Oh, and consider supporting me on Patreon or Streamlabs, both in the description. Just a dollar. Don't, don't even make it more than that. Don't make it hard on yourselves.
All right, everybody. Bye.